in this day and age to be a working competitive voiceover author, you basically have to have a booth at your home. You need a home studio that is broadcast quality. And a big uphill battle for many of us is how the heck do you keep it cool? How do you not sweat bullets while you're trying to sound cool or like a human being? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hello, I'm Jay. Welcome to my booth. If you like this stuff and you find it helpful, hey, you can help us out by clicking the buttons down there. It takes a couple seconds. We appreciate it. If you're feeling particularly generous, check out the description. There are other ways to support the channel directly down there. And we appreciate it. Never necessary, always appreciated. How do you keep your booth cool? It's an uphill battle and, you know, we do what we can. And the biggest, easiest thing that all of us can do to help ourselves out there is take anything out of your booth that is generating heat. So things like lights, your computer, your audio interface, any power banks, any power strips. So if you're using like a tube microphone, move that power supply outside of your booth if you can. And all of that stuff collectively will reduce the working temperature, the amount of stuff that's generating heat in your booth. It'll uh, lower your operating temp significantly. For me, myself, in my booth, Right now I've got my, well not right now, I'm filming something so there's more lights than I would need normally, but usually when I'm recording I've got my mic, my computer monitor over here, I've got my mouse, my keyboard, and a simple little LED strip. That's it. That's all I've got in here. Everything else has been moved outside of my booth so that it can crank away and heat up as much as it wants and not burn me up in the process. So that's one thing that you can do that's super easy and simple if you can. The next thing that most folks jump straight to is ventilation. Now this is a particularly challenging one because when you punch holes in your booth in order to move air through it, you're also pretty significantly compromising your audio or sound isolation. You're letting sound just bleed right into your booth. So a couple ways you can combat that is by using sort of ventilation silencing ducts. And there are lots of different ways you can do this, but the simplest is to build a sort of vent maze with lots of swig squiggles backs and forth. And it's even better if you pad that with insulation or acoustic foam, much like you would your booth in general. And all of those curves, as well as the sound absorbing material in your duct, as the air moves on its way through your space, it's gonna carry with it a bunch of sound waves. And all the curves and all the sound treatment in those ducts are gonna remove energy from the sound as it moves through it into your booth, essentially silencing it, we hope. And so you can build one of those yourself. There are lots of tutorials and walkthroughs here on the YouTubes. I made my first one via one here on this site. You can also buy duct silencers. They look like little tubes that you plug onto some duct work and it is essentially a tube with acoustic treatment and it just eats up sound as it moves through it. Now, how would you set up your ventilation with these silencing ducts attached to it? There are two ways. One is passive ventilation, meaning there's no fans moving or pulling air either into or out of your booth. It's just air moving on its own. And the beauty of this is physics. Science is a wonderful thing. Hot air rises, as many of us know, provided that we still believe in science in this 21st century. And so as hot air rises, if you have an exhaust port or vent towards the top of your booth, the hot air will come out of that. And as the hot air is being pulled out, the cooler air from a vent, an intake vent at the bottom of your booth will be pulled in. So it works sort of like a chimney where the cool air comes in, hot air pulls out, and it moves like that. Now, an important thing to understand about this it's not gonna feel like you're getting an ocean breeze or anything like that. It'll be an improvement over just stale, dead air in your booth where you're just breathing in your own sweat and fumes and stuff, uh, but it's better than nothing. So that's one, step one is duct silencers, passive ventilation. 
Now, if you're feeling particularly ambitious and you want to throw some fans on there, here's the important ways to do that. First step, make sure that your fans are decoupled from your booth, meaning they don't touch your booth at all and they're not touching the floor by your booth. My first mistake in my first homemade DIY booth, I put an exhaust fan, set it on the roof, I put like pads around it, I was had it hanging from something, and despite all of those efforts, whenever I turned it on, the vibrations of that fan, because it was attached to things that were attached to my booth, it would transfer those vibrations to the rest of my booth and it would be amplified. It essentially vibrated everything sort of like a tuning fork almost and I just couldn't use my fans ever because it caused too much noise. So by decoupling, i.e. moving my fan about three feet that way and hanging it from something, uh, I can have it running at a, admittedly, pretty darn low speed, but it's still running and moving air out of my booth and I improve my ventilation that way. Does it lower the temp? Not significantly, maybe one to two degrees, but the big thing is it cycles the air for me. Uh, and so you can, if you wish, put one of those on your intake and exhaust and it'll slightly move the air. I'll leave some notes about products that I've found useful, different types of fans, duct silencers, ducts, etc. cetera, uh, if you're looking to try that stuff out. Now, admittedly, for many of us, if you're living in a rented space or if you're working in a closet that you don't really want to uh, augment, you don't want to drill holes in the walls or in the doors or things like that, you may not have ventilation as an option. Well, the good news is, even if you have ventilation, Firstly, it doesn't do a ton. The best way to cycle air, keep your booth cool, that I've found at least, is to simply take breaks. Work for 30, 40 minutes straight, longer if you can, less if you need to, and then just pop the door open to your booth. Let cool air in, warm air out, leave it open for five minutes while you grab yourself a glass of water, a snack, whatever it may be. Take a little walk, do some jumping jacks, maybe not jumping jacks because that'll heat you up a little bit, but uh, just opening your door, letting all the air move in and out cycle is the best, simplest way to keep your booth cool that I've found. And the key here is many folks think, for instance, one of my first audiobook experiences, I thought that I had to push through, endure things, be sort of, uh, I don't know. I was a bit of a masochist about it, to be honest. And my booth was 95 plus degrees with 70% humidity. It was during a heat wave here in New York, and I had to record an audiobook for Penguin Random House. I was sweating bullets. I was dripping sweat. I was so dehydrated, so tired. And you can take breaks in live sessions, say, hey, listen, my booth is really, really uncomfortable. Do you mind if I take just five minutes and cycle the air and you know it may not be ideal but it's going to keep you healthy it's going to keep you safe and it's going to keep you comfortable and above all all of those things will help to improve your performance so don't be afraid to ask if you need to crack the door and get some cooler air in there more often than not folks are understanding of that fact particularly if you're from a home studio you're saving them money they can they can they can take the couple extra minutes uh, of time there to make you comfortable and then the final bit of advice for this it sort of is in line with that where you don't need to plan a bunch of stuff you don't need to hack the system is to just sadly accept your fate <laughs> to a degree when i stopped fighting the fact that i was going to have to be working in a really really warm space as a voiceover artist and i just accepted it i it, i became used to it the first couple years admittedly i was not the most comfortable i was working in my underwear most of the time still sweating bullets but now you know i find 85 degrees pretty comfortable and now when i go on a walk when it's a balmy like 65 <laughs> degrees i just throw on a sweatshirt because I'm used to the warmer temps uh, and that's just that's just life as a voiceover artist and now for the final like major pro tips these are situations that may not be applicable probably aren't applicable to most of us but I've seen people do it and it looks great and I wish I could maybe in the future 
is if you have a home where you can have your recording space or your studio space, if it's set up in an office or a spare bedroom or whatever, and you can climate control that room to be at a lower temp while you're recording, then the ambient temp of everything will simply drop. Go a step further, you can hook your booth up to the ducting or forced air, the uh, HVAC of your home, and that'll just push air in silently. I would still use duct silencers and stuff to hook that up, but I've seen people uh, attach it to the ducting where they can just pump air conditioned air into their booth. Can you imagine? Maybe someday, but if you're feeling industrious, that could be an option for you if you have the uh, resources for that. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any other pro tips about uh, staying cool in your booth, let me know down below. I'd love to pick up some more ideas. And until the next one of these, be well, everybody, and I'll see you there. Toodles. Toodles.